Welcome back to Lost in Plots. My name is Corey, and this is Owl Crate's bookish podcast. Today we're joined by Amber, who is Owl Crate's own community coordinator, and that means you take care of our awesome communities of nesties in our Owl Crate app. Is that correct? Yes, yes. I take care of all of our nesties. Nesties are the bestie. Nesties are the besties. So if you're not in our app yet, The Nest, check it out. You will see Amber there and get to know her very well. A fun fact about Amber. If you know me, I used to have the top spot in the amount of books read at Owlcrate. Amber has taken over as queen. <laughs> Amber reads even more than I do. About in, about how, in average, how many books do you read a year, do you think? Well, this year is not as good as most years, but for the past, I don't know, like four years, I'm at least at 350. I'm, I usually get over 400, but like, I think the f- four years ago, it was only at like three. 60 or something like that <laughs> just 360 no big deal. <laughs> um that's amazing i'm at a, a, a mere 98 this year so um but as we always say i think any reading is reading if you read one book or you read 450 you're a reader absolutely i'm also just realizing i got straight into talking to you and didn't tell everybody listening what the heck we're talking about today? Oh, <laughs> so that's right. I'll do that. We are doing another throwback book club. So this this recently, uh, Amber and I read The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. Um, a reread for me, a first read for Amber. And we're going to be chatting about The Luminaries a little bit, how we're excited we are to maybe continue the series. And then we're also going to chat about um, some very monstrous book recommendations, because if you've heard, know of the luminaries or you've read it or you've not read it, you will soon find out there be monsters. So really excited to get into it. First of all, I'll get into a summary in just a second. But how did you feel diving into the story? Because this is one you've had on your shelf for a while where you like, was there any hesitation there or were oh, you no. just like straight in? Not at all. I just hadn't gotten to reading it. And then when the second one came out, I was like, great, I just need to read both of these. (laughs) And I just, more stuff came out and I kept like just putting it. It was at like right there on my to-do list. I mean, my to-be-read list. And I just didn't grab it. But oh my God, I loved it. I just, I read it so quickly. Yay. Okay. I'm glad you like it. But for general breakdown, The Luminaries is about this kind of secret society called The Luminaries. It's kind of underground who are tasked with keeping the public safe from nightmares and monsters. And at the beginning of the story, we follow our main character, Winnie Wednesday. I love all the alliterate, alliterative names in this book. Same. You know? um, <laughs> um, but Winnie's father, years earlier, was accused of betrayal and um, telling secrets to another group that didn't deserve those secrets or so we think and uh so they've been kind of outcast her family and her have been outcast from the luminaries and on the day of her 16th birthday she decides she's going to join these hunters anyway and uh she pass ends up passing her trial that night and then as she's let back into the society these kinds of secrets and mysteries start to unravel around them that kind of did it did i I sum it up it was kind of oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) Um, if you like, like, secret societies and, like, occulty stuff, it's really fun. I had a great time rereading it because I reread it. I read it for our book club years ago now, and uh, it was, so it was nice to dive back in. Okay, so let's dive into it. We have a few questions about the Luminaries here. So you said you, like, it was easy to get into, and you're excited for book two. Book three is actually coming out this November, so we're really behind. Oh, Yeah. But over, what was your, like, overall impression of the story? Like, what was your, like, main takeaway, like, just, like, thoughts when you closed the book? Uh, When I closed the book, I wanted to pick up book two. (laughs) But uh, I love that book three is coming out, so then I can just pick up book two and then book three. I loved, like, the creepy vibes. I feel like it is definitely a book for this season. Your autumn creepy, spooky reads definitely put it on that to be read. And I just... you know, of course, you have some questions. Like, you, you're you left with little questions. The cliffhanger wasn't huge, but it was enough where you're like, okay, I need to know things. I've got questions. Here's my list. Yeah, 100%. I, as I said, uh, it was a reread for me, and it was not boring. Again, because it's been, like, a couple of years since I read it, like, I forgot about a lot of the twists that happen and a lot of the, the reveals and so, like, when they came back around, I was like, oh, I totally forgot. And because when I read it, it was going to be some time before the sequel came out. I 
just kind of like put it to the side and it was like oh yeah for sure I want to read the sequel but it just never happened you know story of our lives as readers yeah. <laughs> so I'm super excited to dive into book two which is called The Hunting Moon I have it on hold for my library now so hopefully it comes in soon so we can read it during spooky season we should buddy read that one too I'm in totally <laughs> As kind of mentioned in the synopsis, there are lots of like creepy monsters and spirity kite nightmare things in the luminaries. They all come out at night and the hunters have to go kill them and take them as their prize and protect humanity, so to speak. Um, Are there any like in the story or without outside of the story, are there any particular like types of monsters that like fascinate you in any way? Or was that something you never thought about? Oh, yeah, we have conversations about monsters and stuff all the time. And, you know, there's always conversations about werewolves and wolves and, oh yeah, like, you know, like, can they swim because they're a dog or <laughs> they're a werewolf or, you know, all kinds of different things that I talk about with my friends about different monsters. And in the story, like the banshee really intrigued me, you mm-hmm. know, with how it used its power. That was really interesting. Yeah, there's, I think my favorite monsters in this book were the just because they seem like so ethereal and mysterious is the ghost deer yeah yeah i was gonna say that next <laughs> is that what they were called the ghost yeah deer? the ghost right. deer mm-hmm. um but like they just like put in mind like i don't know just like this glowy forest creature that's like not necessarily ominous but at yet but yet kind of ominous <laughs> right, right um and they're just like Yeah, I was really fascinated by those. If either of those creatures sound interesting to you, again, this is a book that you're going to want to pick up. It will be of interest. (laughs) And something really fun about this book is, again, it's kind of like secret society-ish. And each of the families is named after a day of the week. So again, we have Winnie Wednesday as our main character. Um, and I actually found a substack sub stack called The Luminerds, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> and on that substack, um, there was a quiz where you could take to find out which family you belong to. So it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, et cetera. Did, you took the quiz and what result did you get? Monday, I'm the Mondays. Okay, let me read Monday for you. Mondays are all about intellectual pursuits and preserving history. They are keepers of the luminary past, the experts on lore, history, forest science, and nightmares. You think that's right? Yeah, that sounds like me. I took the quiz as well. And I thought it was funny because I actually chose, you have to like pick A, B, C, D as you're going through the quiz. It's like an old magazine quiz, not like an interactive one that we're so used to these days. Yeah. Dating myself there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I actually picked a different letter for every single day except i picked a twice which means i'm a sunday and sundays are natural teachers they are patient and thrive under intense nightmarish pressure they train young luminaries on their sprawling estate is that me i don't know (laughs) i've had a lot of leadership roles so maybe (laughs) i don't know if i thrive under intense nightmarish pressure but (laughs) um I've, i've i've Definitely had like a lot of jobs where I've been in, in, in a leadership position. So maybe, maybe that's right. We sh- who knows? <laughs> that was my second, second used letter. Like, okay. Like my next used most was a, um, a, so we will leave a link in the description of this podcast to that quiz. If you would like to go take it. I, I don't know about you, but I just love an online quiz. And when I found I that, too. I was like, I will be doing that quiz and we will be talking about it in uh, the podcast. So yeah, that was the Luminerds substack which i love i love that this fandom has a name <laughs> I, mean, I know right <laughs> when you sent me the quiz i was like this is so awesome yes Perfect. i'm a, a, a luminerd yes <laughs> i am okay um now we're trying to be pretty non-spoilery but did you have a favorite scene in the book that you could kind of talk about just a little bit and like tease some people about oh that sounds interesting yeah when jay's training her yes. like with the arrow probably mm-hmm. that's one of my favorites Mine kind of go back to the ghost deer and um, when Winnie is up a tree trying to avoid some monsters and uh, the ghost deer kind of gather around. Again, it's just like this is like just the, the no. atmosphere. It was just like, like so like creepy and I don't know, it, it really evoked creepy for me. Um, <laughs> so that's my non-spoilery. Um, lots of good forest vibes in this book too. If, yes. if you're looking, if you like that, especially nighttime forest vibes, you'll be into it. Okay, and then our last little 
again, we're going to try to be vague and as non-spoilery as we can. But did you, do you have any predictions for book two? Yes, but I feel like it's a spoiler. <laughs> I will say predictions for book two that I'm going to keep vague is there's going to be a big J reveal, obviously. And I want there to be more familial reveals but i'm worried because it's a trilogy that we won't get it yeah until the third one yeah <laughs> so but i feel like there's so many so much that needs to be revealed still that susan dennert will be able to like spread it out throughout the last two yeah weeks. for sure so if you can tell amber and i liked the luminaries <laughs> well, and I, I know we're at least going to get to learn more about the luminaries and the monsters and that's going to be cool yes absolutely and just kind of like I feel like the Susan Dennard is going to expand the world a little bit because right now, like, we're very much in this one small community, and I think we're going to see a little bit more outside of that as the conflict unfolds. So that's exciting. All right, so moving on, we're going to get into some book recommendations now. Now, I'm expecting some good things from you, Amber, as you read so much. <laughs> Um, my problem is I recently moved, as you know, I recently moved across the country and I don't have my books with me anymore. So it's so much harder to think of recommendations when you can't just like look, <laughs> like just like look at your bookshelves. But I managed to come up with some good recommendations. So we'll start off with just, again, these are some general monster book recs. If you want to do a little bit of a synopsis, you can, but a urban fantasy monster. So a book featuring a monster in urban fantasy only a monster by vanessa lynn oh good one good that one. one that one was really good and that has like some of the creepy spooky vibes perfect for this season and kind of have the vibes of luminaries you know the kind of a secret society-ish yeah definitely that's another that was an, also an owl great book back in the day yeah, it was i would say back in the day i guess it was a few years ago now probably um yeah. but i have another one i haven't read the sequel to Goodness. me either me either and i need to <laughs> i want to Oh my god, we're really exposing ourselves here. Um, I was excited for this one because I actually don't read a ton of urban fantasy. I've read like the Jim Butcher and, you know, the classic kind of stuff like that. But I actually recently read, I guess it's kind of historical. I'm counting it as urban just because it's set in our world. Um, <laughs> but so I might be cheating. But I just discovered a couple weeks ago that Octavia E. Butler has a vampire book called Fledgling. Oh, I want to read that. I saw it at a thrift store. Like, I'd never even heard of it. Um, and so I obviously bought it because it was at a thrift store and it was Octavia Butler. And, <laughs> and I read it. And it is an incredible, like, unique take on vampires that I've never seen before. Like, really, it's about this young girl who wakes up with no memories and then kind of soon discovers that she is actually a vampire. But she's a vampire who's been genetically modified so that she can walk in the daylight and it's this like really great exploration of like vampire lore and identity and class as you would expect from Octavia Butler she's a master of what she does and again a book I had never had never heard of before at this point I might say it is maybe historical but it was released in 2005 I think <laughs> um so uh yeah anyways fantastic book I'd never heard of amazing recommend yeah, that one's on my list. I definitely want to read that. That's my favorite thing about looking at books at the at the thrift store is like, I have never heard of this. You're coming home with me. Same. <laughs> okay, a classic. A classic book that features monsters. Do you read a lot of classics? Um, I do like classics. Like Frankenstein is actually one of my favorites. I read that one and it definitely has, you know, the monster vibes. Yes, that was actually what I wrote down for me too because I read Frankenstein like, I guess it was probably several years ago now, but like I, I was like like in my thirties, I'm sure, and I didn't realize it was an epistolary novel. Like, yeah, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, but if you want to, if you want another one, um, uh, Dracula was a really good one. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that one as a classic. I think like I, I do read quite a few classics. I go like in and I go through like phases of like diving in and out to classics. Um, like I said, in our team meeting today, I'm reading both Catch-22 and Don Quixote right now. <laughs> Not sure why, but anyways. Um, that was my light reading I'm doing recently. But Dra I think things like Dracula and Frankenstein are so interesting to read because not only are they more accessible than you think they are going in, like they're quite, they're not very long. It's not like 
again, let's not like Don Quixote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's no war and peace. Um, right. But you also just like gather so many like cultural references that you don't realize where they come from until you read these stories. And you're like, oh, like, of course, like that makes sense. Which is like my favorite thing about reading classics. That was a bit of a tangent. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mine mine was Frankenstein as well. And I also recently read um, Carmilla last year, which was like, might be considered, it's even an earlier work than Dracula. Oh, yeah, so it, yeah. It is like, maybe even the earliest version of a, a kind of a westernized vampire and very sapphic, which we love to see. <laughs> I, I liked that one. I read that one a couple of years ago. I got to do it on audio and it was good on audio. Yeah, I did it too from, from our library. It's again, it's super short. Really, mm -hmm. like, I think yeah. it was only a few hours long, but really great way to dip your toes into some classic lit. Okay, so another wreck. This is one of my favorite tropes, but a main character, the main character is a monster. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of my favorite manga series. I'm a big manga reader. I'm still, like, consider myself a pretty new manga reader, but I've dipped my toes in for the past few years. And um, But one that I picked up, Again, because I found it for cheap at their store, because that's how I do. It's called The Girl from the Other Side. And it's about this monster who in the story is just called Teacher. And there is inside and the other side. And the other side is like the dark place, the, you know, the scary place. And this little girl and Teacher uh, live there together. And it's like, it's just kind of like a dark fairy tale. Like the story is really quiet and um, like kind of lovely, but it's just like has like such dark, creepy vibes. The art is like gorgeous. And this teacher is just, teacher is like this creepy monster, but he's like kind of this little girl's father figure. And it's really, yeah, I really like it. I haven't finished the series. I think I'm only up to volume seven or eight, um, but it's like a super fast read. And a real, if you're looking to like get into manga, I'd give it, a, I'd, give it a go because it's like super like really easy to fly through so it sounds really good it has like it's perfect for spooky season oh yeah for sure i'm trying to think of one some of them like if you say that it's like a spoiler for the book because like they don't start out as monsters but like that's right. a twist like that they change into a monster i don't think i have one you know what? no problem you don't need to have a, a wreck for that one but now i'm just gonna have to make you read the girl from the other side so that you have a wreck I'm going forward. i know for real <laughs> Unless you, like, have, if you want me to do a romance, because, like... You could do a romance. Katie Robert has some monster romance that I read all the time. I just didn't know can, if we can go spicy. Oh, we can go spicy. Okay. Uh, where the main character is a monster. First one that I think of is Court of the Vampire Queen. That's Katie Robert, you said? Yes. The main characters are vampires. It's a very good book. Spicy. I think it has... Katie Roberts done Hades and Persephone, you're telling, as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, um, yeah. Katie Robert does the Dark Olympus series, which is, the first one is um, Hades and Persephone, and then you go with, like, all the Greek stuff later. She also did, um, they did uh, the Disney, Dark oh, Disney yes, retelling. Yes, 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 This is, this is sparking something in my then they ha Then they have the, um the monster romance books where like it's um, dragons and um, wyverns. And, and uh, just for those listening, these are spicy. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> um, and then the final rec we're going to give out is this is hopefully the easiest one is just a high fantasy. I just finished the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb, which is mm -hmm. the third trilogy in the realm of the elderlings universe. And in that universe, characters like come in and out into the different stories. And oh gosh, what there is this dragon, a sentient dragon, Tintaglia, uh, which is like this really cool, cunning dragon in uh, the realm of the Elderlings world that you see mentioned and bring up in different ways throughout the different arcs. And um, because I'm so into Robin Hobb right now, that was the one I needed to bring up because. I love a dragon. I love a sassy, cunning dragon. <laughs> well, I read something that Jordan suggested. It was called The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I highly recommend it. That is one that is on my TBR that I need to read. Uh, John Gwynn has like really like 
classic high fantasy kind of yes. stories that I, I haven't gotten into yet, um, but very excited to. Um, we love a monster. Um, I think high fantasy is just like such an easy go-to to find a monster. So. <laughs> oh, for sure. Okay, so that was kind of uh, all of the recs I had written down for today. I hope you all listening uh, got some valuable info for your TBRs. Um, and hopefully you'll pick up the luminaries if you haven't already. Um, and the sequel is called The Hunting Moon. And then the third book, which is out uh, later this year, is called The Whispering Night. And that comes out, I believe, in November. So we can get all caught up during spooky season. Very exciting. Thank you so much for joining me, Amber. Very much appreciate you jumping on your first ever podcast, everybody. You did fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Very exciting to get new faces on the pod. And uh, for those listening, I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. And I hope that you can maybe go review us on your favorite podcast platform. We would appreciate that. If you want to read us, rate us five star, we'd appreciate that. <laughs> we... We'll be back soon with another episode of Lost in Plots, and we hope you have a fabulous bookish week. Uh, thanks again, Amber, and we'll chat with you soon. Thank you.